Talking openly about dying is uh, something that many people are not comfortable doing, mm. really. In fact, one in four people over the age of 75 have not discussed their wishes or planned any sort of end-of-life care. Steve Evans was forced to face his mortality when he was diagnosed with terminal stomach cancer. Just last month, he appeared on breakfast to appeal for funding for life-prolonging drugs. Despite his situation, Steve was positive. John Maguire went to meet him. Well, it's nice to see you. Thanks for coming. So this is the garden. This is the tree, which will soon shed and give me another job. And this is the fabled summer house. Spend some time with Steve Evans and you step into a world filled with family, laughter and magic. What was the card, my friend? Six of hearts. You should have told me. <laughs> that will be that one, then. <laughs> no, I, don't think so they could, I don't think they could watch it all again. I don't think they could watch it all again. As well as performing as a magician, he was a chief building surveyor at Wolverhampton City Council, a manager at the Civic Hall concert venue, and helped to run huge music festivals, but was forced to retire by terminal stomach cancer. In October 2011, he almost died, and at that point realised he'd made no plans for his death. I could only think about the fact that I'd let people down. And irrational things were coming into my head. The fact that I'd left my study in a mess. For them, other people, my family, to tidy up. And I'd got nothing in place. They didn't know anything that I wanted. And my life's got so many different facets in it. That wasn't logical, surely. And I concluded that it's because I simply thought that my responsibilities didn't end when my physical life did. I couldn't give it any more conclusion than that. Steve takes me to one of his favourite places, the Wolverhampton Civic Hall. This is one of my happy places. Me and the Civic have got a lot in common. We're oldish, a bit broken and loved. And I'll settle for that. So this is where I live spiritually. Because when you've got a happy place, you can be anyone you want to be. And when I'm here, I don't have cancer. Good, isn't it? For a man with so many friends and such a full life, the reality of his time running out has been incredibly tough for everyone. But I think it's how you approach it that, that, that is the solution. Because um, you, I don't think there is a template or a framework for, for discussing your final days. I think it has to be how it works for you and your family, how it works for me and my family they let me get on with it, and I know if they weren't happy, I would have been told. He has now made plans, meticulous plans, for his funeral and for the lives of those he will have to leave behind. I found the writing of the document to be very stressful, and I cried a lot. But once it was down, uh, it was down. I'm a person who plans, and I've found solace in putting incredible detail into my document. But it doesn't have to be that. I think it's whatever people want it to be. Spending and enjoying time with Steve Evans is a life-affirming experience, but he knows his life, still as precious as ever, is now near its end. John McGuire, BBC News, Wolverhampton. Watching that with us, Sam Turner, director of Dying Matters, which is the group which aims to improve people's knowledge about dying. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it's Steve, a shining example, really. Of well, hasn't he done his job, uh, my job for me this morning? <laughs> Can I it, just well, yes. um, say that um, I spoke to Steve last yes. night, and I think viewers will want to know uh, two lovely pieces of information. One, um, he uh, found out on Friday his tumours have shrunk, Brilliant. which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And to today is his birthday, so oh, we should say well, happy, birthday. happy birthday. Yes. Well, a lot, a lot of people have got in touch with us this morning to, to tell us how inspiring they find him and his story. But it's interesting what he said there, that writing down the detail was incredibly stressful yeah. and very upsetting. And perhaps, although he found the courage to do that, that is one of the things that people, that encapsulates how people think about dying, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely, and I think nobody's pretending that these conversations or making these plans is, is easy mm. in any way. That's why Dying Matters exists, to try and help the people that want to do it, and we've got all sorts of information and guidelines on the website and films and things to help people make 
their wishes. But actually, what he also said was um, that once he'd done it, it gave him great peace of mind. And he, Steve actually got a chance to do it when when he was dying and he realised the importance. And he was quite lucky yeah. in, a, in a funny way, because then he went went on and made his plans and now he's he's got them in place. He can yeah. get, there, a, there get on with the rest of his life. There is naturally a lot of fear of, of death. And some people probably may feel a little bit squeamish about it in the sense that they think, if I start making plans, it might make it more likely to happen yeah. early. You know what I mean? Tempting fate in that mm. respect. Well, it, it's such an odd thing, isn't it? We're so terribly British about these things. And there is a lot of superstition and taboo around it. And we, we do kind of think that if we talk about it, it'll happen. And somehow, if we don't talk about it, it won't happen. What, and at what, neither age should you start, at what age do you think you should start thinking I about think it? I think the sooner the better. All so my, have you made a plan? All my plans are in place. Really? All my plans, all my family. You know, I sort of work in the business, so I should do. <laughs> Uh, but actually, it becomes much more difficult to do once you are ill, I think, to have those conversations. And, yeah, to think about it, because none of us know. None of us know what will happen. We don't know what's going to happen, so how can you plan for something you don't know? Because, for instance, you might be, you know, you might suffer a stroke, you might have terminal illness, and in those two different cases, you would want to be treated in... or you possibly would want to be treated in different well, ways. Well, absolutely, and... and but that's the reason to plan. So what we're asking people this week to do is have a will, incredibly important, to not leave people in a, in a mess afterwards, um, plan their funeral or their wishes for their funeral, um, think about the care and support that they would want. And of course it'll change depending on, on what happens to you. Mm. But have it, it's an ongoing conversation. It's not one that you do and it's set in stone and that's what will happen to mm. you. But actually, if you were to have a stroke tomorrow, wouldn't it be wonderful if the people that were important to you knew your wishes mm. and well, could carry them out? Be not necessarily wonderful, but it'd be a relief to them. It would to be have a, an idea. a relief to you yeah. and to them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's lovely. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Thank, thank you. you. Let us know what you think about that. Twenty-eight minutes past seven.